Yeah, it's on. Uh, I guess we don't need the cover. All right. Oh, ah. I usually put the cover out or whatever. I don't have any dinosaurs to put out. I don't have any yeah, either. well, because there's nothing. There's nothing to put out for this movie because it's n not anything really. So, so apparently, I was just looking this up. Apparently, the original Spanish title. I don't know if this was actually a Spanish, UK co-production or not, but either way, it was a Spanish film. Uh -oh. the original Spanish title, for some unknown reason, was Where Time Began. Okay. Um, which doesn't make any sense because it was obviously the Jules Verne story of Journey to the Center of the so Earth. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Have you read Journey to the Center of the Earth? I've never are read you, it. Are you familiar with the story though? Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so the, the all the highlights are there? My mm -hmm. question is, is there an element of time messing? No, in the original book. Okay, no. so that was that, that was, was all cloth. Yeah. yeah. That was somebody like, like, you know what would be really cool is if there's time travel involved too and but like the one maitre d guy there's like 10 of him because he's fucking with time and shit or something but we know. literally learn nothing right yeah, yeah. this whole movie the fantabulous mm. journey of dr well Freaky okay okay to the center so of the so we get around you know at some point we'll get around to watching like there's a james mason version of journey to the center of the earth that uh -huh. is fantastic but it is a 60s movie so you know there's walking <laughs> there's shenanigans, but there's walking. Right. So, like, th so that being said, having watched that version, essentially, yes, this film version hits a lot of the key points, adds in King Kong for no apparent reason, right. adds in Xanadu and time travel for one, no apparent reason. One, one off, one off, one yeah. off. But um, it, the essential parts are there. The idea is they take, I mean, just like so much... Well, why does the volcano always blow up, Dave? In the movie has to end. Well, yes, <laughs> but there's another reason. It's because you can't change how we understand the world right. in your movie. adventure movie, right, where you go to a lost place. So it has to it has to disappear at the end of the movie. Otherwise, you'd be like, well, wait, we'd know that was right. there now, right, today. But... but so, so I get I get why the end of the movie we cannot right. bring the lost world back because it right. will no longer be lost. Right. I mean Here. they do a much better job in other versions. Of where I'm going right. with this, they do a much better job in other film versions of Journey to the Center of the Earth of basically saying, well, look, we made this big expedition. We did go down there. We were down there for like a year or whatever, and we did make it back. But but I'm a scientist, and all my notes were lost. So therefore, I must do it again. Otherwise, I am asking you all to somehow believe my word as a scientist, and everyone's like, "Yes." It's what that's everything. This is it's a one-handed exercise in futility, right? Because mm -hmm. the professor, for no other reason, wants to go to the center of the earth because a book said it was true. Right. So let's do it, and we can do it now. Right. So there's, now. there's no reason for it. You get me though? Yeah. He says this book says it's true. So let's do it. And that is the MacGuffin. Yeah, uh, still in other, I guess, you know, in other versions of this. Right, but we're you, stuck with I, this bastard. The idea <sighs> is, is if you can bring back samples, if you can bring back your notes, then you were truly doing it as a scientist. Right. But they are ejected through one form or another at the end of the of the story, out of the center of the earth, and but they have nothing but right. ex but the adventure that that and, we tell you. And, and also it. proactively not working toward anything. Right. 
No one was taking any pictures. They said, well, okay, they so the, the one thing that... I don't the, know if they had... The one thing that was... You could qualify as setup and payoff, right? So they set up, professor says, here, Axel, <clears throat> write a diary. So then his narration kicks in. So you think, okay, that'll be our log. That'll be our through line. That's it. The payoff for the book is, here, you're going to have a couple of speaking lines narration-wise. We need to justify well, it. Well, and they do go to the center of the earth. Right, but then... The scientist who should be like, this will make me, this will make me, this will make me. Because we see the giant turtles, we see the giant dinosaurs. Yeah. We see all these things that any scientist in their this, mind would look at and be like. This is exactly why, this is, and I hate to say it because I know there's some people who are going to hate hearing me say this, but it's true. Can't this be. is exactly why foreign versions of most science fiction fantasy films usually suck <sighs> yeah, prior to, say, 1995. I think we might have a <laughs> cultural... Disconnect, right? Yeah, it, it's the the cultural disconnect is there. The you know the way that storytelling is done in say like I Italian and Spanish films versus how it was done in like other Western films, also a big problem it, it here. It feels jumbled, and yeah. on top of all that, it it's just sort of like mm, who cares? Right, right. Because we also don't have a budget for doing this, so why are we doing this? Right, but that's the thing. So here, here's <laughs> one of my biggest gripes about this movie. When there is no budget, one like of in well the biggest, <laughs> the biggest in the land unknown, no budget. We saw that T Rex costume all the goddamn time. Yeah, we see the scaly puppy once. Well, we did see, we see the turtles once. We scene. saw we saw that giant ape a lot for like five minutes. Right, but he was in the one scene, right? Yeah, yeah. even if you yeah, cut away from it, right? Yeah, that, that was the, you want him to no be like what, what's the name of the what do they call the T Rex in Land Before Time? Oh, uh, sharp tooth. Yeah, it's not like sharp tooth. Yeah, just keeps on be, showing up. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. It was it was situation after situation, conflict after conflict, and the only and perfect justification for this conflict and how to resolve it is back to the boat. Need more sheep. Giant turtles. Back to the boat. Volcano. Back to the boat. Yeah. Small island with literally nothing on it. Back to the boat. Right. Storm. Back to the boat. This movie is back to Xanadu the boat. Xanadu strangely under uh, 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 <gasps> underground with several clone versions of one of, yeah. the, of the guy who's along for the ride. Super in future. Running, running the city of the super future. Don't tell the scientists. Back to the boat. Let, let's get back to the boat. <laughs> and that, and that's that's the second. So that was my biggest issue. My second yeah, I think, issue. Yeah, I think it's that. Nothing goes explained. Right. It, well, and it doesn't. Just even a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Like I get. Okay. So what is explained? I get. Old dude with the beard is old dude at the end and was the old dude throughout. Right. Our our Michael Mads character. Right. Michael Mads. I don't even know. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. He started this loop and then ended it in the same spot. No one grew. Old dude who brought the book. He was just like, he, he's like the weird, <laughs> he's the weird scientist guy who's like, I bet you the other scientists would like an adventure, yeah. I it it kind of feels, yeah, <laughs> like a guy who got into science just to figure out how to fuck with people. Yeah, yeah. That's our dude. Right. Because he goes, oh. And, and then and I'll, leave, I'll leave you the copper tea kettle at the end. And it's so, um... Again, it's probably a cultural thing, but for for example, like when old dude walks into our bookstore, and everybody's like, "No, we don't buy books. We don't buy books. We don't buy books." Okay, so what are we doing here? Like, why? I, I get the refusal of the call, right? Mm. Let's not refuse before the call, huh? The call is well. The point was, yeah, doctor but, got book. Right, right. Don't don't refuse, refuse, refuse. Yeah, but the do yeah, but the doctor was there. He was going to be the one to be like, hey, I'm just, I, I'll buy your books. All right? right, this guy's an asshole. I'll buy your books. It's so funny where the refusal of the call that should come from the hero right. comes from a nobody who's like, please leave, and then he's no longer a character in the movie. Right. So even our hero's journey, all the elements are done by other people. Kinda. <laughs> it's like if Luke Skywalker, yeah. like let's say, because everybody knows Star Wars, so Obi Wan Kenobi goes up to Luke Skywalker. Is this buy my books? Is this buy my books? <laughs> but or, or Luke Skywalker the whole time is like, nah, nah, nah. No. I don't think so. And the whole time he like, because imagine what we could have done is because the movie could have split into two beautiful two paths. And the guy who says, no, get the fuck out of here. And the guy who says, I'll give you three quarters. The guy who <laughs> says, no thanks, wins. We get to watch a movie where an old dude smokes a pipe and looks at old books. <laughs> Almost as entertaining yeah. as Back to the Boat. Yep. Yeah, there was a. It, it's weird how much 
production value they put into certain moments of this movie. And some get zero. Yeah, yeah. It's like you have this... I love, I love how Europeans do alien forests. Like having been a you know a fan of Doctor Who or right. the movie Legend so or a few great. other things, yeah, that, that that whole ape sequence, that like that jungle set, really cool. Yeah, because like, it always feels shit like that always feels very alien. Yeah, because um, conceptually you just say, oh, it's art. Yeah, you yeah, one way or the other, it totally works. Yeah. That um, you know, it, it reminds me of the the Doug McClure uh, Center of the Earth movies too. Um, where you know it's everything's weird colors and shit, but at least it feels alien. It always feels weird. Right. Um, so yeah, they're, they're always really, really good about doing that sort of thing. I think that's where our, our cultural eight ball that we are both behind and in front of. Yeah. Because without the weird culture of the visuals, the ki- the fake King Kong scene, scene, and all the other stuff would be not there, yeah. and we'd be like, whoa. You know our opening title sequence uh, for our show. The you see the. Uh, it's supposed to be like a Dilophosaurus or something like that. Right. Basically, it's a like a uh, like a monitor lizard with a big fin on. Yeah, on yeah, its yeah. Back. The Dimetrodon. That, that's yeah, the Dimetrodon. Yeah. yeah, that Dimetrodon scene is actually from the James Mason version of Journey to the Center of the Earth. That is how how do I put it? Um, uh, oh, it's a, oh, it's a good fucking movie. That's what that is. That's a oh, good movie. This yeah. this one that we watched not so yeah, much. Yeah, what we saw was <laughs> w- roughly eighty two minutes of Back to the Boat with eh, some puppets here or there. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, it, 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 you didn't need to, no money. So were those supposed to be Dimetrodons with the sails? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was, but they had like long necks or yeah, something. They yeah. were screwed up. Yeah. But the, that, so our first like. They, they didn't C-monster. actually have paleontologists in, not, in Europe yeah, back no. in the day. Somehow they went without uh, paleo- They went without <laughs> science in Europe. That's why women were so flighty and weird. Yeah, yeah. But that's just the thing. Is like, I want to know where she got the squirts. Where did they get anything <laughs> from Hans's mystery bag? Or maybe, maybe Hans made it all with, with the hair from his own back. My oh, even better. Okay, so my I'm pivoting. My first theory was that Hans is some sort of Felix the Cat type character whose sideburns are so bushy he can literally pull anything <laughs> from them. But then when he takes his shirt off, we see that wool is everywhere. Yeah. Why not have yeah. him be like? It's not even his. It's made from all the sheep that he right. Plays. Yeah. He just is so involved in the sheep that he's like, aha. Juby's he's like Marge's hair. She can reach in and pull out anything. That's Hans. This should be our. This should be our uh, classification system going forward with the series from now on. How many sheep would you rate this movie? Right, because yeah. it's a is sheep it, a is, day. Is this a, is this a ten sheep movie so or is this like a, a four sheep? Because I'm thinking like a three sheep movie. Because Well, then where's our scale? We say one from ten sheep? Yeah, one, to, ten one sheep? to ten sheep. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was I'm giving go, this three sheep. I'd go a hundred. <laughs> but I guess it doesn't matter because it's all just add another zero. Yeah. <sighs> I'm giving it three sheep. Three sheep, huh? Yeah, this is my three sheep film. Three sheep to the wind. Yeah. Right. I'm going to say you're probably right. All right. Because it's not even a five. The, yeah, the reason this, why I'm going to say... This is not a rewatch. It's a three and not a two. Yeah. Hans. Hans is Hans awesome. Knocks Hans knocks this movie up one whole order of magnitude. Yeah, and you were slightly impressed with the ape suit. And the ape suit, yes. Yeah. But, but when... I love his googly eyes, though. Oh, his googly eyes, <laughs> the mouth. It's all crazy. But... And if, if the ape had become the sharp tooth, you know right. what I mean? If he's like, uh-oh, here comes uh, the monkey to cause some shenanigans again. And he was like in um, Dinosaurus. Mm. The caveman, the brontosaurus, the kid, they all came they, together. Yeah, things keep right? on coming back and coming together. Yeah. yeah. I if, mean, granted, if Hans there is a certain... Hans and yeah. or the dinosaur... If, if the, any time was spent bringing anybody together, yeah. we weren't just talking about each other this far apart. We weren't getting lost this far apart. Right. The sense of journey... Like an actual oh, journey yeah. is much better in that other film version that I've seen, and and I know there's other uh, there's a crap ton of film yeah. versions of that particular story. So it'll be interesting to start, you know, over time seeing the yeah seeing journey. the different ones. But uh, but the one was... thing that you can say about the James Mason one is, is that it feels like you go from place to place and things lead to other things. They eventually lose the raft and have to go by foot after right. you know things like that. Things I mean, it makes, change. Right. A journey is yes instead of back partake- to the boat. Yeah, it's partaking of change. Yeah. So. Technically, this was a journey because they were moving from one place to another, but for literally no reason. Right. A journey takes place when you have a goal in mind. Still, yeah, exactly. And this one, like, they just it, they just happen to... It, you get a sense from other versions of, okay, here's, 
here's where the cave opens up onto the sea beneath the world. Mm. And eventually the sea closes back down and there's another cave and that's the only way to go. And so you're going to find the Arnie Sack Newsome initials there. Right. And you're going to just have to keep going. Whereas this one was like, they just happened to like end up on a beach yeah. that have, oh, hey, look, the AS is right there. It We're good. It just seemed like accident after accident after accident. Like when you watch... Well, there's... A the word A-S. Are they both an accident? No, I guess not. Never mind. <laughs> so, but, perfect journey movie story, right? So we have this, a journey. No real destination, so it sucked. The made-for-TV Armando Sante Odyssey. Uh, Say what you will about it. He has a journey. Yeah. And he's going somewhere it's not here i am back to the boat here i am back to the boat where are we going again i don't know here we are back to the boat where are we? he wants his wife scientist guy professor i have no idea what he wanted except so, for when he wanted to hit that wall yeah so much of like middle european filmmaking back in the day just seems to be about putting a spectacle on the screen and worry about stringing the story together later yeah and this is definitely suffering from that um yeah. It, oh, it, yeah. On yeah, top yeah, yeah. of yeah, on top of the fact of it not being, you know, up to production code compared to so many other fantasy you know, films, what? you may have stumbled upon a very crazy point because mm. we have like, so you know, motion picture started and it was all spectacle because there was no sound, right? And then sound popped and things got boring because then we get a monologues and dialogue and instead of seeing things, we were hearing them. Yeah. So we swung too far. The 60s and 70s come back too far the other way again. <laughs> so here yeah, we are. Yeah, it's like they're still doing Melier. Right. Even if though we, we were, have talkies now. If we saw a silent movie, Lost World related silent movie, it would right. be all spectacle, right? Then we saw She, and it was all dialogue. All dialogue. And now this. So we that pendulum swung from one to the other, and now yeah. we're back over here. Not quite no dialogue. Not quite all spectacle. So... <laughs> right. So, so I said three sheep. I, yeah, I hundred percent agree. Three, <laughs> three is probably more than it deserves. Mm, mm, yeah, but I mean, it's got a few good moments. Yeah, and, and I think the girl's cute. Right. Yeah, she's she's hilarious. Everybody's great. Our military <laughs> man is way weaker than our he man shepherd. <laughs> the raft. Sheep. 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 <laughs> Back right. there, no sheep. <laughs> Bad there, way, sheep. sheep. There's sheep under the ground? Dude, I don't think you're thinking this through. There were sheep everywhere. <laughs> you know what he was like? Hans and the sheep of this movie. Oh, that's the like, other payoff that you got, though. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was like, uh, it was the antithesis of Julio and the Brontosaurus. Right? <laughs> yeah, everybody loses everything in Dinosaurus. <laughs> At least in this case, no, there's, they're, they're really a sheep. Julio they're, gets yeah. the Brano and he goes, yay! And then he's murdered. Boo! Oh. Hans says, sheep, sheep, sheep! And then he gets a sheep, sheep, sheep! And he runs around with it! It's heartwarming. I love that part. It when is. you see him holding the sheep... It's true. I loved it. So happy. Holding his little sheep? Sheep. Sitting there waiting for the lava to Pompeii his ass. <laughs> But I got to my Jeep. I don't know why my accent <laughs> keeps changing. He never spoke, so he could be all over the place. You know? Well, in the James Mason version, he's Icelandic, so he doesn't speak. You know, he only speaks Icelandic. So he they have like the girl. Right, right. So the girl. Yeah, he's just like fjord, fjord, fjord. Yeah, the girl who's along. She she does the uh, the interpretation for him. So. That would be awesome in this movie. And he was just like blah blah blah. And she got and they go. What did he say? He goes fjord. Sheep. <laughs> Sheep. <laughs> Okay, we can end it there. <laughs> uh, sheep. What was the guy's Lom? What's his old first name? Herbert Lom? 